Hi, my name's Luca. Hi, this is David Weiss with Blended Planet Pictures, and this video is intended as a follow-up to my uh, now ancient video on character design and sketching within the GIMP. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is kind of introduce the features of Anime Studio Pro, which is a program I really only just started using very recently and have been extremely impressed with. It's obvious that the guys that develop this software um, actually use it. Um, and uh, every time I think something should work a certain way in order to get the job done, it seems to really be designed that way. So anyway, what I'm going to do is kind of go through the process of um, taking a character design and rigging it up in Anime Studio. Now what I started with for this particular project uh, is a design. Uh, this is the sketch of the character that was done. I can't remember if this was done in GIMP or my paint, but um, this is a character. His name is Luca, and he's a character in an animated cartoon I'm developing. And now I'm going to turn this off. And one thing Anime Studio lets you do is hit, uh, you can do file import and import what's called a tracing image. And I've already done that. And then control U turns it off and on. Okay. Um, what I'm going to end up with is this design right here. And I'll, I'll show you the animation that was already done with it. Okay, and now there is there is actually another YouTube video um, that has the the sound included with that. I think because we're uh, recording right now, the it's locking up the sound card, so you can't hear the the soundtrack. But he's basically just saying, "Hi, I'm Luca." Hi, I'm Luca. Okay, so that's what that's all about. All right, and this uh, demonstration should show you a lot of the the features of Anime Studio. Um, by the way, there's two versions of Anime Studio out there, Debut and Pro. I think Pro costs 200 bucks. Uh, debut may cost like, I don't know, 50 bucks or something. It's not very expensive. And um, most of the features that you need to do what I'm going to show here are all in the Debut version. So it's not like you got to spend a bundle um, to get busy with this software. So let's turn on the background image. And I'm just going to kind of go through... Um, Step one, you want to think in terms of layers when you're um, working with Anime Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer that's a vector layer. Vector layers are what you draw in. And I'm going to just use this to represent the face of our character. All right, let me zoom in. Now, the way I work, you know, if you're, if you're animating in Toon Boom or Flash, you're probably going to be using a tablet and doing a lot of sketching. And that... That's what I do when I'm doing character design. But when I'm actually rigging up a character, I really like the way um, the workflow in Anime Studio works. It's a little more mechanical, but the results are, are really nice. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I want to I wanna go ahead and create the shape of the head. And I'm going to do that with the um, Add Point tool, which is the A key. So I'm going to hit A. And there's several options here, auto weld, auto fill, and sharp corners. Since auto fill is on, I'm going to go ahead and, um, and by the way, I'm not going to answer that phone call. And um, I'm going to go ahead and set the color, just choose a color that I want to use for the, uh, for the skin tone. This guy's kind of a, not really Asian, I guess kind of Middle Eastern looking kind of guy, so I'm just going to use a skin tone, kind of an olive, a little bit darker than Caucasian, but maybe kind of an olive tone. All right, and then all I'm going to do is just go make four points. One, two, three, four. And you can see the Anime Pro um, automatically welds the points for me. If I were to render this right now by hitting Control-R, you can see it's got the outline and everything. Um, now, rather than adding a bunch of points to define the shape of the head, I'm actually going to go ahead and deal with the curvature. So I'm going to hit the G key uh, and then click outside the shape. If I click inside the shape it selects all the points. I can lasso a point or I can click outside and all the points are unselected. And then I hit the C key and what I'm going to do is just go ahead and adjust the curvature here. So bear with me for a minute while I do that. 
the T key is used for kind of moving the points around. Again, C key for curvature. And in this particular case, as you can see, the character's pretty close to being in the zone shape-wise, just from that. Now you could, you could uh, maybe soften this a bit and add another point up here. You, know, you just hit the A key and add the point, and then you hit C to to adjust the curvature to taste. But you know, the point being, it's pretty easy to get the the shapes dialed in. Now, again, if I render that, the outline is kind of on the boring side. So, and I'm just kind of finessing this as I go. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit the W key, which is the width key. And what that does is it lets me sort of um, tweak out the outline a bit, give it some character. Um, let me take a look at that. Yeah, I just, I like a little bit of variation in the uh, in the line and I should say also that when you um, I, I'm not going to demonstrate this here but you can go into the rendering settings and actually make all kinds of adjust adjustments so that like the outlines are are a little bit noisy with a wiggle um, you can use a custom brush so that the outline has you know some noise or some some activity to it in this particular case I kinda like the the real crisp kind of outline so um, and I'm gonna try to create these elements in such an order that it kinda makes sense from a learning standpoint okay in other words I'm not I'm gonna try to go from simplest to complex so pretty much one of the simplest things you can do is what I just did I mean you just add lines with the A key um, and then smooth them out and tweak your line width and you're done. Um, a next logical step might be to do the ear, which allows me to demonstrate another feature. I'm going to call this ear one. Okay. I've got the fill and, and stroke colors. Um, and for those who don't know, the stroke is the outline. They're already set, so I don't need to mess with them. So I'm just going to hit the A key. And now in this layer, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple points here again. I'm going to close that. And then hit the G key to, un, you know, click out here and unselect. Hit the C key, do some curvature. Let's just go ahead and get that to match pretty closely what my sketch. And obviously, you know, if you if you have a better idea and you want to tweak. Like for example, right now, I'm only going to add the um you can use your mouse wheel by the way to zoom in and out. I'm just going to do the slightest tweakage to that. Okay. Now, I'm going to use my W key to um and there's more than one way to to skin a cat here. Um what I'm doing is I'm using the W key to tweak the curvature as I demonstrated before. Okay. Now, obviously, that should be behind the, well, you could put it behind the face, which would look like that, but I don't actually like that line there. I want it to be in front of the face, but I don't want this line to show. So what I'm going to do is, let me go ahead and adjust that, and then what I'm going to do is hit the H key. And the H key is hide um, for hiding the uh, stroke, hide edge. Okay, so the H key, so I just go like that, and now, basically perfect. Now, if you really want to tweak it, you could go ahead and shrink that down completely so it kind of goes to a point which looks a little better now in in truth if I would have done that which I did initially it would hide this edge anyway because this this outline is reduced to zero but for demonstration purposes it makes sense to add the um, hide the line with the H key now another thing you want to be able to do is add like a shadow kind of thing here inside the ear what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit the A key again create a three-point line and then I can select that now if I render that I'm not gonna see it okay because the anime studio pro doesn't see a line as a quote-unquote shape you have to define it as a shape if it's not already a closed you know obviously the ear and the head were both closed shapes um, so what I need to do is hit the U key and that allows me to define a shape either by grabbing points 
In this case, I'm going to grab all three and then just hit the space bar, which does the same thing as clicking this button, create shape. Okay. Now I'm going to tweak just like I did before. I'm going to add some curvature to this line in the middle. I'm going to use the W key to shrink these two ends down to Zippo. W key here in the middle to fatten that one up a bit. Move that up, kind of pull that down, cross there, render. That looks pretty good, and that's what I was looking for. I'm just trying to create the shadow within the ear. Now, that entire, um, the entire ear is a single layer, and what I'm going to do now is I need to duplicate that layer over to this side. So for simplicity's sake, what I'm going to do is take this layer, I'm going to set the, set the uh, rotation center on this layer by hitting the zero key. I'm going to put that rotation center right here. Okay, and the reason I'm going to do that is I'm now going to click this, which is duplicate layer. Okay, it automatically named it ear two for me. And then what I'm going to do up, up here is hit the um, horizontal flip, which flips the layer. Then I'm going to grab the one key. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. Let me re rename that. Okay, back to ear two. Um, and that happened because I was this, this still had the focus, and I started pushing keys. What I should have done is clicked here. Okay, so I'm going to hit the one key to translate layer. Move this ear over here. Obviously, it's a little bit big. It needs to be shrunk down a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink that ear a bit so it fits. Hit the one key to move it back in place. And then, obviously, this ear needs to be behind the head. So I'm going to move that down to here. And I feel like when I render that, I feel like this outline here is a little bit strong. So I'm going to go back to the face, W key, and just take this node right here. Um, and this one, just soften them a bit. And I like that better. Okay. Um, how long have we been at it here? I'm not sure. It's been, it's been a few minutes. I don't want to run out of time. So I think we'll pause here. And in the next step, we'll go ahead and add the, um, the nose, the eyes, the mouth, the eyebrows, and uh, possibly move into animating.